Hello, welcome to the Polyglot Files. My name is Michael and today we're doing a video about one of the most elusive topics in linguistics. Before we get started though, I did just want to let everybody know that I will be doing a Q&A live stream when I reach 10,000 subscribers. So if you would like to leave me a question for me to answer during the Q&A live stream, leave it in the comments below. There will also be more details about this live stream to come, so definitely stay tuned. And if you're not already doing so, follow me on social media where you can find up-to-date information. It will be there, probably, maybe, hopefully, it will, I promise. Okay, all right, moving on. Question, what do aliens, cannibalism, and evolution have in common? Well, in the context of linguistics, all of these have been touted as explanations for the origin of human language. Some of these ideas are based on myth and religion, while others are based on scientific inquiry. Today, we're going to try and explore the major ideas in all fields. Let's get started. When talking about the origins of language, it is interesting to discuss when exactly we as humans began to speak. If you subscribe to the theory of evolution, which I will adopt for this part of the video, it is postulated that Homo sapiens, or modern day humans, evolved about 300,000 years ago. However, it is not clear if we started speaking right away. Given the fact that speech doesn't really leave any artifacts, or at least it didn't back then, and also the fact that humans didn't begin to write language until about 5,000 years ago, it is actually quite difficult to figure out when exactly we started speaking. Estimates, however, place human speech to around 200,000 to 100,000 years ago. This is due to the fact that we can trace the development of a gene called the FOXP2 gene, or the language gene, and apparently this gene gave humans the ability to talk that other animals didn't have. Okay, so it's safe to say that humans have been speaking some sort of language for a while, but how exactly did that language or those languages come into existence? Some of the earliest theories for human language development are known as divine source theories. In these theories, humans were given the ability to speak by none other than divine godly beings. For example, according to the Bible, God gave Adam, the first man, the ability to name all of the creatures of Earth, and from there we got language. One Swedish philologist even said that God originally spoke Swedish, Adam spoke Danish, and the serpent that tempted Eve spoke French. I think it's safe to say that that philologist didn't like the French very much. Further, the Bible also says that God apparently one day got really angry that humans were trying to build the Tower of Babel. So God decided to give all the different people building the tower different languages so that they couldn't communicate with each other and build the tower anymore. He also scattered these humans all over the earth, therefore giving rise to different cultures and different languages. However, the Judeo-Christian version of events is not the only mythological origin of language that we have. According to Greek mythology, humans spoke the language of Zeus himself. Huh. According to the Wasania people of East Africa, apparently all humans originally spoke the same language, but then one day a sickness came over everybody and we all began babbling different strange words, and that's how the human language is diversified. In an Aboriginal Australian myth, an old woman named Maruri passes away and all the neighboring tribes come around to feed on her corpse. Each tribe ate a different part of her body and each part of the body somehow gave each tribe a different language to speak. But language myths aren't confined to ancient civilizations. According to a man named Alex Collier, the first human language was in fact Tamil, a language I spoke about in a previous video. Check it out if you feel like watching me get berated by commentators. Commentators? Commenters? Alex Collier states that we as humans got too powerful, so extraterrestrials or aliens became threatened by us, so they came down and gave us all these new alien languages to try and confuse us. It is worth noting, however, that Alex Collier is not a linguist, nor is he a scientist, but he does say that he has been in contact with blue aliens called Andromedans for a very, very long time. So I guess there's that. It is also important to note that Alex Collier has been accused of fraud and being a con man, and 
Alex Collier may not even really be his real name. Okay, leaving outer space and returning to Earth for a second, let's look at some more scientific theories for where human language came from. The earliest theories of this nature can be traced back to German philologist Max Müller in 1861, and he outlined five basic theories for where human language came from. The first possibility is called the Bow Wow Theory, in which humans imitated animal sounds that became increasingly more and more complex to accommodate our communication needs. This one could actually make a little bit of sense, especially if we look at the English word bow wow, which is an imitation of a dog's bark, or meow, which is an imitation of a cat's meow. The next theory was the poo-poo theory, where he stated that human language started as an emotional response to things like pain, pleasure, and surprise. We can see this in modern English words such as ow, when you stub your toe on the bed for the 14th time today. Our next theory is the Ding Dong Theory, which is an almost mystical belief that says that all things in the world vibrate or speak a language, and that humans learned their languages from that. The Yoheho Theory says that humans developed language through coordinated chanting in order to get work done. This can be observed through the construction workers outside my house every morning who yell heave ho at 5 a.m. The last theory that Mueller postulated was the Ta-Ta Theory, where language began as tongue movements mimicking hand gestures. He claimed that the word Ta-Ta itself was actually the tongue flapping up and down the way that hands flap up and down when you say goodbye. Ta-Ta! Aside from the almost comical names of these theories, many more scientific theories have been developed since the 1860s. One of the most interesting is called the putting the baby down theory. This theory proposes that when humans evolved, mothers lost the ability to have enough body hair for their babies to cling to them while they gathered food or did other tasks. This resulted in mothers putting their babies down on the ground. Consequently, the babies would become upset and the mothers began to develop a sort of mother ease or a mother language, a collection of vocal and non-vocal ways to console the baby while continuing with a given task. The idea is that language continued to develop from these sounds. That actually makes a lot of sense. I see a lot of mothers around who speak a very weird way to their children. <sighs> However, the most complex theory for human language comes from Noam Chomsky, a renowned linguist and scientist. According to him, human language came about from a single random mutation in the human brain, and this theory is called the single step theory. This mutation gave way to what Chomsky calls complex thought, which in itself gave rise to the development of human language. Chomsky presumes that this mutation created a small group of homo sapiens who had the ability to speak, and through natural selection and evolution, this mutation eventually spread to all humans. Further, Chomsky maintains that there is no such thing as a proto-language, or a language that was primitive and then gave rise to more complex languages. Instead, he says that this first language resulting from this mutation was already complex. This is because Chomsky says that this first language had generative grammar a theory that he's famous for having hypothesized for all languages. In short, generative grammar is a theory that says that language follows predetermined rules set out by the brain, and these rules are recursive, meaning that humans can create an infinite number of unique sentences within the confines of an inherent grammatical structure in the brain. This got really sciency. I apologize. Maybe I'll do a video on Noam Chomsky and his theories another time. If you'd like that, leave a comment below. So, what do you think? Where did human language come from? In the interest of time, I didn't talk about every single theory that there is about the origin of human language, so if you have one you think I missed, definitely leave it in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out my social media so that you can leave me a question for me to answer during the live stream Q&A. I have a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As usual, thank you for watching the Polyglot Files, and I will see you next time. Ta-ta! That was really creepy.